Hi, my name is Mark Levin. I'm a senior field service technician with Amatech Level Measurement Solutions. And today, we'll be going over how to upgrade your existing Magnetrol Displacer Level Transmitter to the E4. The Magnetrol branded Module Level Displacer Transmitter has been a trusted, reliable design for many decades, and the E4 is the newest generation which brings the technology in line with the latest Magnetrol software platform. The E4 retrofit opportunity is available as a model E4T, which will allow you to upgrade your old EZ, ES, or E3 electronics to the E4 and take advantage of the newest features and functionality. This procedure can be performed in an instrument shop or in the field without interrupting the process. In the retrofit kit you'll find the E4T transmitter with dummy and closing tube, also referred to as an E2. The tools you'll need for the installation are a snap ring pliers, a flat blade screwdriver, an eighth inch Allen wrench, and a laptop loaded with packed wear, 250 ohm resistor, and a heart modem. Those are optional if you wish to use the laptop to set it up. You can also do the setup from the display of the transmitter. We'll be performing our installation on a demo calibration stand. But a similar process can be performed whether using weights in an instrument shop or if changing levels in the process. This demo stand will simply allow me to move the core stem as if there is physical level movement on the displacer. We're going to start by removing the old housing. You can start by powering down your old transmitter, remove the cover, top cover, and disconnect your wiring leads. After you have your wiring leads disconnected and pulled out of the transmitter, you're then going to remove the cover from the LVDT. Then using the snap ring pliers, you'll see a small snap ring installed right up here, just above the top of the LVDT. I'm going to use my snap ring pliers and pull that snap ring off. I'm then going to loosen up my three eighth inch Allen screws. Once those screws are loosened up, we are then ready to remove the old housing. Now also notice that there's a little washer right here that you might want to grab to make sure you don't lose it because you'll need to put that little washer back on. So now I'm going to very carefully just lift my old housing off. And notice we have the enclosing tube still intact. We have not broken into the process. Now that we've removed the old level transmitter, we're going to get the new transmitter and get it ready to install on the existing equipment. To start, you could remove the wiring cover from the top. So when you get it on, you'll be able to wire that up. And then you're going to remove the LVDT cover. And you'll see inside you have the LVDT, the snap ring and the little washer, and then up through the center of the LVDT is the dummy enclosing tube. So we're going to need to pull that dummy enclosing tube out. That's there so that when this is shipped, everything is held in place and it doesn't get damaged. So now to put it on, we're going to remove the snap ring. And what's nice now is you'll have two snap rings and two washers. They're small pieces. So just in case you lose them, you'll have those. You're now ready to remove your dummy and closing tube. So now notice the LVDT is now free. And we're ready to go ahead and put this on the existing process. Make sure the little eighth inch Allen screws are loosened up enough. And you will simply slide this on. just like we slid the other one up. Make sure it seats all the way down. 
Push your LVDT all the way down. Replace the little washer. Get one of your snap rings. Place your snap ring down. You can now put your LVDT cover back on. Now you can rotate the transmitter to provide whatever orientation for the display you would like. So in my case, I'll just point it out straight. I'm going to tighten up the 8th inch Allen screws. Now you would run your wires in, attach your loop, positive to ne positive, negative to negative up here. And you are now ready to perform the calibration of the unit. Now that the E4 is installed, Users have the option of performing a dry calibration using weights or a wet calibration in the actual process under normal process conditions. This procedure can be completed using the display or by installing the E4 DTM on your PC with Pactware. If using Pactware, you'll probably need a 250 ohm resistor unless your power supply has one built in. In either case, the procedure will be similar. The calibration selected field must be updated to the correct calibration type, dry or wet, for the user calibration prior to moving through the calibration procedure. During this procedure, users will select their desired units of measure, set up their 4 and 20 outputs, or LRV, URV, and input the operating specific gravity and temperature as they would with any new installation. I'm going to run through this really quickly on my laptop here and show you how simple this is. I have the main Pactware screen open. I have my transmitter hooked up. I'm connected to it. I'm on my calibration test stand. And by moving this piece up or down, I'm simulating the LVDT core movement as if liquid level was actually on the displacer. So I'm going to start by pushing this down, which simulates a low liquid level on the displacer. I go into device setup, advanced configuration. I'm going to enter password 126 in the enter password line, enter 126. I'm going to go to calibration selection. Right now it's in the factory calibration I'm going to go ahead and change it to a user wet calibration because with the test stand I'm simulating the core movement as if it was wet. So when I enter that, you will see my calibration information come up and I'm going to go ahead and set my low calibration point since I'm simulating my low level. I simply click this button and it's going to set my low calibration point. And when it does that, what it's looking at, there is a LVDT percentage in these devices. And it goes in and it looks at that, and it's going to store the percentage that that LVDT is at. So now that it's done that, ask me one more question. Set, whoops, set that to yes, and OK. Now it's going to ask me to put in the level I want to associate with that. So I'm going to call that zero inches. Now I've entered my low point. Now I can lift this up, simulating a high level or a higher level on the actual displacer. And now we'll go in and set my high point. And it'll ask me the same questions for the high point. And I'll go ahead and scroll through these gives me my percentage that the LVDT is at. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to enter that. And I'm going to call that whatever level I want to associate that with. So if it was like the displacer I showed you earlier, that was 14 inch displacer. My high point, I'm going to call it 14 inches. Enter that. I have now set this up where it will track the LVDT movement. 
So I'm slowly moving the LBDT down, which is simulating a lower level. And you can see on my screen, the transmitter is responding to that. And then likewise, I'll just lift it back up a little bit, and you'll see it respond. In closing, the E4T retrofit transmitter provides the opportunity to take a reliable displacer-based design and take advantage of the new features and functionality of our latest magnetrol software platform without interrupting the process. For assistance with your new E4 or any other magnetrol product, please give us a call or visit our website.